What would you do if your child was sick? Well, you'd try anything to make him or her better. NBC's Michael Oku met one little boy who's made a dramatic recovery, and it may all be thanks to a cutting-edge treatment. This is the look a mother gives a child who she loved when he was broken and may now be whole. I see hope. It just makes you believe in miracles. Cynthia and Derek Hextel conceived in vitro after three years trying. Baby Dallas was a blessing, but soon after his birth, they knew something was wrong. He would cry for three hours straight, like he was in pain. He couldn't really focus on things. When he started eating baby food, he had trouble controlling his tongue. A specialist eventually diagnosed Dallas with cerebral palsy, brain damage that impairs muscle control. It was horrible. But days later, a glint of hope. Cynthia remembered they had preserved blood from his umbilical cord. So when Dallas was accepted to undergo a potentially life-changing procedure as part of a Duke University clinical trial, they jumped at the chance. Morning. Morning, Dallas's cord blood cells infused intravenously in less than an hour. We are hoping that treating children with cerebral palsy by giving them back their own cells might help repair the brain. And then just five days later, from the child who had never uttered a word, and of course, him and I started crying. He grabbed the video camera. Once withdrawn, yeah, Dallas started waving, wave. laughing, and appeared more curious. When we first met him, he was eager to connect. Six months ago, Dallas couldn't do this. In fact, there was no guarantee he'd ever be able to do this. Dallas Hextel is here along with his parents, Derek and Cynthia, as well as our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. And while we were watching that piece about Dallas, he was grabbing the script, going crazy here, having yes. a good time. It's been about six months since his transfusion of the, the blood cord. How has that affected, or the cord blood, I'm sorry, how has he changed in that period of time? Um, I mean, almost in every way you can imagine. I mean, just from five days afterwards saying mama and waving, and we just feel like now he really connects with you. Um, he kind of, it just seemed like a fog was over him before, like he just really wasn't there, and it's hard to really explain what you just, there was kind of like a glaze in his eyes, and now he's just, as you can see, he was stealing your, you can't get anything past him. I mean, he's just very smart and on the go, and walking where before he went to Duke he was we were trying to teach him to use a walker and now he walks with no assistance at all and I mean to us it's just amazing. And do you believe it is because of this transfusion without a doubt? We think that has a, a real big part to do with it because there was such a drastic change within five days of the procedure taking place it, it had to be because it, he wasn't reaching the milestones that he's reaching now he was falling further and further behind and once we had the procedure done he he started to get closer and closer to the milestones he was supposed to be reaching and quickly Nancy, what do you make of this well you know i think it's important to remind people that cerebral palsy has to do with the motor part of the brain and usually kids don't deteriorate but they have some significant motor problems, which explains, I think, he, he wasn't a good sucker when he started, when was breastfeeding as a baby, and then went through this colicky stuff that sort of confused the diagnosis, and then learning how to walk. But I have to tell you, I think one thing that medicine has not done very well is that we haven't made a big enough deal about anecdotes. This is not a controlled case study. It's not a randomized clinical trial. But it is a child with a diagnosis who got a transfusion of stem cells and not only stopped the deterioration of his problems, he's doing better. So I take it very seriously. And I think it's an extraordinary reminder that cord blood, that stuff that's thrown away with the placenta in the emergency room as sort of medical waste, can have extraordinary applications. We're all offered it in the, emerge in the delivery room. Do you want to keep it or do you not? And most of us say, oh, no, because really, what are the odds of anything happening, happening to my child? That's what I'm going to ask. Cindy, what a classic example. Why did you decide to do that? Because when you were pregnant, you had no reason to believe that Nothing. your child was going to be unhealthy. perfectly healthy pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, it did take us three years to get pregnant. So it was a good chance that he was going to be our only child. So that was one thing that if we were going to do it, this was our only chance. Heart disease ran in his family. Um, I was adopted, so I knew if we ever needed something, you know, Dallas and I would be the only one. So those were things, but nothing like I thought something was going to be wrong with my child. Um, 
So literally it took us till about two weeks before my due date to make the final decision because it is expensive, but then we decided and that... And it's not covered by insurance, which is another it's thing. It's not. It's not. But if you put it a little... If you think, the I want to save my cord blood, and right. The value. It's and it's a perfect genetic match to that child. And therein lies, I think, the true magic of this. You don't have to get donors. You don't have to look at stem cells elsewhere. You have your own that are especially made by Mother Nature for you. Now, what are the doctors, your doctors, saying about Dallas in terms of is it possible that he could be cured of cerebral palsy? Yeah, they said by, by the age of seven that there may be no signs of cerebral palsy at all. So he's, yeah, he's on, his, he's on his way as far as we're concerned. Will he need more transfusions in the future? No. No. He, he, there's not enough stem cells left. He's only, he had 191 million put back into him during the transfusion, and then there's 15 million left that they keep aside in case in the future they're ever... And the idea there, there, you really take the cord blood, it goes into the simple transfusion, and these cells know where to go in the body. It's extraordinary. They're like gold. They're I mean, like, they're so they are. Well, I think they the set up shop in the parents parents has been damaged. Damaged. Save that cord right. There's Absolutely. no reason not There's no to. downside. I mean, there's no really economic That's a big upside on. with Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you so much, guys, amazing. for joining us. Thank you very much.